Hi everyone and welcome to this week's video with Split Coast Stampers. Um, my name is Natalie O'Shea and I'm thrilled to share a project with you this week. Um, I'm actually a Stamping Up demonstrator from the UK so I will try my very best to remember to do instructions in metric and in inches um, while I go through this. Um, thankfully we're not talking about, about legal size paper and A4 paper and things like that so let's kind of get on with it. We're going to be making a five-sided box um, and let's, let's just go straight in. Um, I've got a black piece of card here because I thought it kind of stood out um, quite well. You have a template that's with this video um, and the template is for this piece here and what you need to do is you need to cut out five of these. So use the template, get a pencil, just draw around them on your required card and cut them out. So here's five I made earlier. So you should have, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go for Rococo Rose. And there's four I've done, and I've actually scored these already because you didn't wanna sit here watching me score them all. And um, so all you need to do with regards to scoring is once you've cut them out, I just kind of used um, my grid paper as a guide to make sure I was at least doing straight lines since so I wasn't scoring like that. Um, so just using however you score, so whether you use a scoreboard, whether you use a trimmer, or whether you go back to basics like me with a ruler and a bone folder. And again, just using a straight level to make sure that that is straight. And you're gonna be scoring along there as well. So three scores on each piece of card. And again, I'm just putting that so it's straight, making sure that is straight. That'll do. She says, <laughs> there we go and so you end up with five pieces of card now you're going to score just use your bone folder again or whatever you use some people use their fingernails whatever works for you I'm a bit of a bone folder girl there we go so you're going to end up with five one two three four five of these now we're going to be sticking all these together so let's, let's get going, and you're literally going to be gluing them like that over the top of each other. So I'm going to try and use this. <laughs> oh, I might just change whatever your tape of choice is. It's going to be strong enough to hold a box together. So I'm just lining up these two bits here. And, or you could do it the other way if you wanted to. If you found that easier, you could do it that way as well, because then you could do the score lines as well. That's good enough. And then, and then I always get the last one wrong. So these ones are always good, but then when I'm doing the last stick, so all in a line. So that's your first stage. All done. There we go. So you've got something that looks like that. I'm all a bit wonky. There we go. So now we need to make sure that we get these on the right bits because that's going to be sticking like that. No, it's, yes it is. <laughs> See, I'm worrying myself now. I'm like, oh, is that the right way? It is the right way. Of course it is. So glue there. So just carry on the same. I think I did it the other way before and I was like, what have I done? There we go. So just line them up again. You can't lay it flat. If it was four-sided or six-sided, you could. But because it's five-sided, you can't. Now, what I will say to you before we continue is I've chosen to do five of these. But if you cut two of these, you can make a little kind of flat envelope. Three of them, and you can make a triangle-shaped box. Four of them, and you can make a cube. And keep going, literally, you can go for as many as you like. So this template is a great template for whatever size box you want, really. Just cut as many of them as you want. But today, we're going to be going for a five-sided box. Now, you can see that, obviously, you've got some bottom pieces there, which would have a hole in the bottom. And then we've got some a nice sort of petal shape there. But again, that's got a hole in it as well. So what we're going to do next is we are going to sort out that. So I've grabbed a piece of Rococo Rose and, oh, and a pencil, she says, hold on. Oh, there we go. And I'm, aha, is that gonna fit on there? I might need a bigger bit. 
Hold on a second, bear with me. Right, let's try that again. So I've got, I've got a whole sheet, a whole sheet. And I'm literally going to just draw around this. This is a pentagon. And I'm just gonna use the edges as my guide. And I'm gonna just draw around the box. Out of I can't see what I'm doing from here. So just keep it steady, because you're going to be drawing a pentagon. There you go. Now, hopefully you can see that bad job I've made, but that's as rough as you need to be. Now I'm gonna cut inside the lines, because obviously this is outside the box, and I'm gonna be sticking this on the bottom, so I want it to be inside, so I'm gonna go inside those lines. And it doesn't have to be perfect, so please don't think it has to be. There we go, let's get rid of that, that's easier to manage now. And you can tweak this, so if it needs, if once you put it on, you think, oh dear, that's not quite right. This is the bottom of the box. So no one's going to really see it. And they go, oh, I've got a bit of a wonk going on there. Right. So then we, this is the bit we want to cover. See, that's not too bad, is it? Now, if you have a look, and I kind of eyeball it, really. You can, this wiggles, so you will need to make sure you've kind of put it in the same shape as you did. And there. I think we're kind of like that. Even I might go a little bit just, so just trim, as I say. You're only going by the bottom of the box. So it doesn't need to be perfect, perfect. I just might just trim a little bit more off there. So just do it by how you feel. That's better. That's it. Right, okay, so I'm going to put all that like that. And then we are going to... <laughs> I hope we get the, it the right way again. Like that it is. Right, okay, so... Just going to add glue around the side so i'm going for wet glue again you could go for whatever glue you want to you don't want to glue all in the middle because that's the gap there so when you oh there we go now i use wet glue just because it gives me a little bit of wiggle room oh you know it's going to go slightly wrong don't you there you go and then i'm going to turn it over and use my bone folder or fingers or anything you wanted to, to just add some pressure. Can you see that? Just to those bits so you can see it. There you go. Now once you've stuck that down, if you feel that you've got a tiny bit of overlap, I mean there's a tiniest, tiniest bit there, you can just go round and trim it with your pair of scissors. But you probably won't have too much because you've cut it smaller. There. So, I think that's it. I think I'm happy with the rest of that. Depends how perfect you want to be, but honestly, as I say, it's the bottom, so no one's really looking at that. It's more for um, strength in the bottom of the box more than anything else. So that's kind of the basics of our box already done. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to decorate the sides first, and um, then we'll worry about the top and the fact that it's got a hole in it. Um, in a little bit. So, what I have done with these, and this is where I need to get my measurements out, but you will have instructions, so you've got a PDF with the instructions that you can download as well. Um, so, I've got five sides, it's a pentagon, so I've already done four, so again, you wouldn't have to wait for me. <laughs> but these are, so if we're talking inches, then that is three inches by three and three quarter inches. And the pattern paper is two and three quarters by three and a half. So just a quarter, well, yeah, quarter of an inch or smaller. So, say that again. My border is three by three and three quarters. Pattern paper, two and three quarters by three and a half. If you're talking metric, then let's go around that way. And you're talking seven and a half centimetres by nine and a half, which means that this will be seven by nine. So there we go. So once you've cut five of each of those out at those measurements, just stick them together like that. Ooh. 
and you should have a small border going all the way around if you've cut those right there we go and then because I hadn't made the box I couldn't stick them on but you're just going to stick these on your side panels it strengthens the box and makes it decorative so it's all good Okay, let's bring our box in. Well, I'm going to be wary because I'm going to get glue everywhere. And just stick these on the side panels. So this is the In Colour Designer Series paper that I've used. And you can use whichever pattern you like. And in fact, you can go any colour you like. And I'm just sticking these on the side panels. Don't squash it too much. As soon as these goes on, go on, it feels a lot sturdier. Okay. Go, Oi. And there's our fourth. Ooh. Let's say if you use a wet glue, it just gives you a little bit of time to wiggle around. Whereas if you use a tape or something, it's not very forgiving. Okay, that's better. So there we go. So we have a bottom and we have some sides. But again, we still have a gap. Now, if you've got something that's got a tall stem, you might want that gap in the middle of there. Um, but in this occasion, I'm going to just show you some of the ways that you can um, cover it up. So you could cut another pentagon, stick it on the top. Um, but I like to go for something a little bit more decorative than that. Um, so I've gone for a Ramona Coco Rose again. And I've gone for the Starburst Punch. But any, any shape, it doesn't have to be a circle and it doesn't have to be that size. Um, basically anything that will cover here. So you might have a scallop circle die or a different shape die, a label shape die that you want to use, anything like that. Um, and I'm gonna put these, so hang on, which way, that way, that way. Because there's a way to do these, isn't there? It's that like that and that like that. There we go. So they're all underneath each other. And then I'm gonna use my glue to just stick this Rococo Rose Starburst in the middle. And this just covers up that middle section perfectly. Now you need a little bit of weight on this. So while we're waiting, I'm just gonna stick that on top because the wet glue does take a little bit to dry. So I'm gonna show you another bit in the meantime while that's sticking down. Okay. So, what else are we going to decorate these with? So I thought we would use the Daisy Lane stamp set and two different sized daisies. So I don't need to open them because I've got them here already. And Smoky Slate is the grey colour that I'm using. So I've got my Smoky Slate ink pad. And I've got a tiny, I've got a small bit because again, I've done them all earlier so you didn't have to see me do all these. <laughs> But let's go for the large one. So the large daisy and just stamped. So smoky slate on smoky slate, tone on tone. And then this is the large daisy punch. And I pop that in there. Always use your punches upside down because you can see what you're doing. And even I kind of, so I'm holding this down a small bit so it's not gonna fall out, but I'm not squeezing it so tight that, um, that it cuts it. And I'm just playing around with it, just making sure it's exactly where I want it to be before I finally commit. Oh, there we go. And there's one of my large daisies. Oh, can't get that out there, of course. <laughs> and then we just do a small daisy as well, or medium daisy as it actually is called. So exactly the same again, smoky slate on smoky slate. That's that done with now. And use the medium daisy punch to punch that out. And again, just twist it until you're happy that you've got, oh, there we go. So you need to cut six 
large daisies and six medium daisies and I'll show you why in a second but before we do that again I'm going to use my bone folder you could use the edge of a pair of scissors um, or a pencil and roll it around a pencil but I find a bone folder works best for me and I turn this over now don't pull too tight but you know how you used to pull ribbon through a pair of scissors and it all curls up well that's the same principle so I'm just going from the bottom of the leaf and I'm just rubbing my bone folder along those. Now pull too tight and you'll pull those petals off. So you don't want to do it too tight. And you only want to do it a little bit. You can go back and do it again if it's not enough. If you haven't got the pressure right or you're just starting out and you don't know whether it's enough or not. And can you see now, probably can't from that angle, how it's all curled up. If I do that, you might be able to see as well. Probably not from that angle. And then I'm doing exactly the same to the medium petals, medium petals, just a little bit, not a lot, and then a bit of bit wet glue in the centre, and I want the small leaves of this, of the small daisy to go in the gaps of the large daisy. So again, the Tombow gives me that little bit of wiggle room before it starts sticking. Now can you see that? How cute is that? Oh, let's go there. Mm -hmm. So, you can see that there. Right, so now what I'm going to do, that's going to be glued a little bit. Now, let's stick. So that bit's glued there. I'm going to stick a bit more glue there. Oop. And hold that in place. It is so light. It's not a solid closure because you want people to be able to get into the middle of it so might need to just wait there while that sticks a little bit yeah it's not going to let me get on is it oh do you know what i'm going to do i'm going to turn it upside down and we'll work on it that way and that will give it what it needs although that's not going to work either <laughs> oh it will stick it'll stick when i'm ready Okay, so let's go. So it's a bit annoying doing five sides because you can't actually, um, you can't balance it properly. So again, I'm using wet glue, but you could use a glue dot if you wanted to, or a small piece of tape. And I'm just going to put these in the centre of each panel. So it brings in the grey, the smoky slate grey from the outside. And there we go, there's one. And as I said, to save you from watching, I made a few of these earlier, so you didn't have to watch me do all those. That could have been quite boring, couldn't it? <laughs> so let's see. So want one in each panel. There we go. Just make sure you're guiding it with the one that you've already done as well, so they're not all over the place. Or you might want some at the top and some at the bottom. You might want to go for the less uniform look. But those of you who are like me, Oh, that scares me. They have to be as central as I think they can be. Right, I'm going to have to go around that way now because um, otherwise I'm going to squash a daisy. I can't have that. You can obviously do as many layers of these if you wanted to. If you wanted to do um, too large or too small, then you could do that as well. So you don't have to do one large and one small. It's entirely up to you. Here we go. Okay. So one more for the outsides. Oh, come on. There we go. Oh. I'm going completely off screen here, aren't I? Woo! -hoo. Okay. Now, I might clip that afterwards, but what I've also done, just for the sake of this video, oh, is... It will stick. That's the thing. Oh, there you go. It's done. Stuck. Yay! And um, is I've used my two-inch circle punch again, depending on what you're using as to whether you want a piece of pattern paper in there or not. So I've just cut out a two-inch circle or punched out a two-inch circle of pattern paper. Um, gingham on the other side, if you like that. And I've stuck that. The good thing with this is it doesn't really matter which way it goes, but it brings some pattern paper to the centre of that starburst. It's perfect, it is now sticking. It takes a little while for the um, wet glue to, to dry, but as soon as it does, then that's it, it's stuck. But it's lightly stuck. 
and then we're going to put one of those right in the top and there is our five-sided pentagon box decorated the petal leaves of the box and the petal leaves of there we go you'll get better view on the <laughs> on the pictures but you get the idea so quite big I mean when I'm looking at this it is let's have a look so centimeters first it's about 12 centimeters square ish if it was a square so 12 centimeters is move that round about about four and a half inches about four and a half inches so four and a half inches or 12 centimeters depending on what you're working with but how pretty is that quite simple it hasn't taken me long to make this i mean i know i've, I've cheated a little bit and, and pre-made some of these but a simple border you could really really use different pattern papers i put, kind of went for a quite a muted pattern paper and um, because i wanted the flowers to stand out more but you could go for quite a busy um pattern paper and you could use the flowers and keep them white you could go true daisy style and make the petals white and have yellow centers um, and just punch them, you wouldn't even need to stamp them. So lots of different ways that you can do that. But hopefully you like that as something a little bit different as a pentagon or house shaped box. Thanks for joining me. Bye bye.